Big Red Book, 547. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene And wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me For me it was in the garden He prayed not my will but thine He had no tears for his own griefs But sweat drops of blood for mine How marvelous, how wonderful And my song shall ever be how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. When with a ransomed in glory, His face I last shall see, will be my joy through the ages to sing of His love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Let's all stand and pray, please. Dirge, will you lead us in that prayer, please? couple thank you notes this was a this is a Bedouin temple donation acknowledgement thank you so much for your contribution to our transportation God bless you Gene Foster potentate of Bed Bedouin shrine how much did we give $750 is what we gave also another thank you note we appreciate your business uh, it's been a pleasure serving you and we want you to know we appreciate your business. We will always do everything possible to merit the confidence you've shown in us. Thank you again, Lisa, Dora, and James, and everyone at Wimberley's. Guess we bought our refrigerator off of them. Yes. That's all in the back. And it's in the back there if y'all want to go look at it. Yeah, don't get the ice. we got to dump the ice. And the ice is bad? Well, just the first batch. The first batch is bad? Yeah. Any other announcements? Anything? Who wants to help take up an offering? Raise your hand. Anybody? Griffin? Casey? Ashton? That's three. All right, Ray. One more. Okay, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for these who come to take up your offering, Lord. I pray that you bless them. Bless this offering, use it to glorify your Son. Saint in Jesus' name I pray, amen. job out.
page 546. 546, your big red book. <clears throat> I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I cling. In His blessed presence live, ever His praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best songs. Faithful loving service to, to Him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Souls in danger, look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Okay, all the kids, come forward. Black bag special. Yeah, there's something cool inside. All the kids. Psalm 178 says, Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Thanksgiving's coming upon us. Next Sunday, we're going to have our Thanksgiving lunch after church. And then the next, a week from Thursday is going to be Thanksgiving. And all of us have fun things we do on Thanksgiving, right? Like get up and eat. And all through the day we eat. A bunch, don't we? Yeah. And what do we eat? Turkey, Turkey ham, mashed potatoes, gravy, sweet potatoes or candied yams. I don't like those. All of that. Well, you know, all of that comes back from the history in 1620. Approximately 100 English set sail for the New World. We know it is the USA, the United States of America. But then it was just an unknown world. They got aboard a ship called the Mayflower, and they sailed across. The ship landed on the shores of what we now know as Massachusetts, and there was a famous rock there. Anybody know what it is? Plymouth Rock, that's right. And it was there they would form the very first permanent colony town, settlement, in the area known as New England. But the sad part is, is the very first year they were there, more than half of those original settlers died. The native people who lived in the Plymouth Colony area, they were members of various tribes of the Wampanoag people who lived in the area for many, many years. After settling there, the pilgrims came in contact with one of the Indians, and his name was Squanto. And Squanto was an English-speaking Native American. He taught the pilgrims a lot of things. How to plant corn, where they should hunt, where the good places to hunt and to fish were. And quite frankly, he probably saved the lives of the settlers that did not die. And our Thanksgiving holiday has become, uh, it stems from that very time, the first Thanksgiving dinner they had 
was held in the autumn of 1621, and the, and the Indian tribes, the Wampanoag people, came with the settlers, and they had gobs of food. Now, they didn't go at the store and buy theirs. They had to go hunt it. They had to harvest it. They had corn. They had fowl, which would have been maybe a turkey, but definitely deer and that. And it was a big time that they could celebrate because they were thankful for the new friends they had, thankful for the food that they had, thankful that they were in a new country, thankful that they survived to have this time. And then it became, do you know when Thanksgiving became a national holiday? Any of you guys ever heard of Abraham Lincoln? He is the president that proclaimed Thanksgiving a national holiday in 1863. That's almost 150 years ago. Now, I have something I want to give you that, that to help you remember maybe a little bit about Thanksgiving. Look at that. Any of you guys like candy corn? Oh, I was afraid of that because if you didn't, I'd have to take it. Actually, I don't like candy corn. Just hold your sweet potatoes there. There we go. I'm not a big I'm not a big candy corn person, but my dog loves them. Oh, I could not do that again. But inside of here, I want you to look. There are five kernels of corn. And there is an old Thanksgiving tradition that is called the five kernels of corn. You got one? By the way, that's your kid up here, Kristen. Not yours, Weston. This one's Kristen's. You know which one now, right? Okay. Anyway, it's called the five kernels of corn. And many people follow this tradition of five kernels at their Thanksgiving dinner. They put them on a plate at each Thanksgiving dinner. They're not to eat, but before you go and start your meal, it's a reminder to you of what you should be thankful for for the year. Now, I know probably all of you are going to eat this before you even get out of the building, but should you happen to save this and take it home, maybe you could start this tradition. And, and the five kernels of corn are representative of five things that we should be thankful for. What are they? Number one, God loves us. Do you know God loves you? Each and every one of you. He loves you. Second, God provides for my needs. How many of you came to church in a car? How many of you had a heater in the car? How many of you had a seatbelt in the car? How many? All of those things God provided for you. How many of you have parents that love you? Now, Nikki and Sean record shows he was first to say that. Child abuse, right, Jared? <laughs> I know in days to come that will haunt me. Okay, moving on. God provides for my needs. Going to have to start wearing hard hats to the children's sermon. <laughs> I'm thankful for my friends. You know, when you look, how many of you have friends? We all have friends. And we have a friend in Jesus, too. We need to be thankful for our friends. Our fourth kernel is for our family. You know, it's neat to have family that love us. And then finally, we need to be thankful that God hears and answers our prayers. So this Thanksgiving, would you be willing to put out five kernels of corn and maybe take a moment and pray about what those five kernels, what they mean? and what you're thankful for. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today, and thank you for reminding us of all the blessings you've bestowed on us and what we have to be thankful for. And may we take this day to come in 10 days, 11 days, and be thankful for it. Jesus, we love you, and we ask these things in your name. Amen. Drop the kid in the children's sermon. That's a first. Sorry about that, Jerry. I think he's going to be all right.
Page 469, Big Red Book 469, 469. <clears throat> we praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, Thy glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, then the glory revive us again. We praise Thee, O God, for Thy Spirit of life, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, then the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, then the glory revive us again. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. Made so be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thy glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thy glory. Revive us again. One more, if I can make it through it. 149. 149. 149 <coughs> Up Calvary's mountain One dreadful morn Walk Christ my Savior Weary and worn Facing for sin Death on the cross That he might save them From endless loss Blessed Redeemer Precious Redeemer Seems now I see him On Calvary's tree Wounded and Sinners pleading, blind and unheeding, dying for me. <clears throat> Father, forgive them, thus did he pray. Even while his life blood flowed fast away. Praying for sinners While in such woe No one but Jesus Ever loved so Blessed Redeemer Precious Redeemer Seems now I see Him on Calvary's tree Wounded and bleeding For sinners pleading Blind and unheeding Dying for me Oh, how I love Him Savior and friend how can my praises ever find in? Through years unnumbered on heaven's shore, my tongue shall praise Him forevermore. Blessed Redeemer, precious Redeemer, Seems now I see him on Calvary's tree Wounded and bleeding For sinners pleading Blind and unheeding Dying for me Jerry.
Jared, I'm glad you made it through. If not, they'd have to have me. I'm thankful every Sunday for Jared that he can be here. You need to be thankful that he's here too because it might be me. Last week we were in Psalm 107. I'm going to pick up 107 again and, and, and verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord. He is good. His love endures forever. We're talking about thanksgiving and, and, and what have we to be thankful for? Well, we're going to go to Ephesians for most of our, 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 our sermon today. We'll be back in various places in the psalm. But go ahead and turn to Ephesians and I think chapter 5 probably. A couple of quick announcements uh, that we have. Next Sunday is our Thanksgiving dinner after uh, the morning worship. Uh, church has got the, the meat and the bread taken care of. We need dessert, stuffing, green beans, baked beans, corns, or corn, whatever else you think of. Bring it. Be a great time of fellowship. We missed last year, so I guess we get to do twice as much this year, right? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. But uh, anyway, come and, and, and be part of that. It'll be a great time of uh, fellowship. Uh, the ladies' Bible study, Sue Patterson's house, uh, they'll be starting James chapter 2. Uh, if you need some information on that, talk to Sue if you'd like to go. Not sure where, meet at the church at 1240. They bunch of them ride out, drive out together. Behind me, you see 30 Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. They're starting to come in. We need our shoe boxes by next Sunday night. We'll be taking them around 8 o'clock next Monday, a week from tomorrow, to Stigler, to the drop-off center. So still have some shoe boxes out in the lobby. Grab some. What you have, fill them. The shoe bo- the video we watched today is, is, is I probably had 12 questions last week that were all the same. Now, what is it we can't put in the shoebox? Liquor. Oh, liquid. That either. I, I tell you, that's what I heard. Honest. I'm sorry. I won't tell that was less that said that. But I know, moving along. and Wow. Anyway, anything with, with liquid, you, you saw that it was it was there. Do go to the website if you have any, any questions. Uh, and then the labels that you have, are the inside there should be a, a piece of literature that tells you some do's and don'ts. They have really have, they, they've put some harsher restrictions there, uh, unfortunately, but that is not Operation Christmas Child doing that. That is just the countries that we send to, and, and if they find it in a box, they can keep the whole shipment. So uh, with that also, understand the, the uh, cycling center down in Dallas. They have to go through every box and pull out the contraband. Jill and I have been part of that. Robbie has been part of that. And, and I mean, literally, we have to go through every single item in the box. And if it's questionable, we've got a bin that we have to throw it in and then put the box back on. So save your money, save your heartache. Uh, just don't send the, and the candies. What got me is we used to send the gum and the hard candy and none of that this year. So notice the changes that, uh, that are there. You know, it's hard to believe in 11 days it's going to be Thanksgiving. I, I mean, really, it's, it behooves me. Where did this year go? Because Thanksgiving is in 11 days, and then two weeks it'll be Christmas. Or that's what it'll seem like. Our year is wrapping up. But it's at this time of the year you can walk through a store and find the words thankful, grateful, blessed, painted on, on half of all the home decor, coffee mugs, uh, different things in the store, uh, t-shirts, all of this. November's a month when everybody remembers for a moment that they are, in, in fact, supposed to give thanks for something. And rightly so, but what exactly are we giving thanks for? Well, last week we looked at what we have to be 
thankful for God's providence, perception, purpose, patience, and presence. Today, I want to look, look at, and tonight also, what is real thanksgiving? If we look at it, what, what is real thanksgiving? Real heartfelt thanksgiving can be summed up in, in five words. And we'll look at those words. Proper, perpetual, pervasive, pleasurable, and possible. Impossible. So when we look at those, let's start by, by looking that real thanksgiving, it's proper. It's proper. Scripture in Psalm 92, 1 and 2, tells us this. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in mourning and your faithfulness every night. It's proper for us. It's right for us. It's not expected, but it is. When you do a good deed for someone, don't you kind of like for them to say, thank you? How many of you have done something for someone and there's no thanks that's given and as they're walking off you go, you're welcome. How many times do we leave church without ever giving thanksgiving to God? And you have to wonder as, as we're leaving, he just wants to say, it's okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. It's proper for us to give thanks because God, it's God that is our Father and that we're thanking. Ephesians 5.20 says, We are to be giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything good that we have comes from God. Every good and perfect gift is from above, comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. James 1.17. Did you catch that? Every good and perfect gift. So you might say, I did that. If you haven't looked in the kitchen, go look in the kitchen. We've taken the old refrigerator out. There's a new refrigerator that's in there where the old refrigerator is at. There's a really nice counter, cabinet, microwave stand, all of that, giving us a little more space in the kitchen that was needed. Ray, with, with, without him, if you were dependent on me, we'd probably have one board up. But Ray will tell you, he and I, we didn't just sit down and throw our saws in and poof, all of this came out. But God has given gifts to he, to myself, and we were able to do this. But we will not say it was us that did it. We will tell you it's for the glory of God that we were able to do that. We're not going to pat ourselves on the back, nor do we want to pat on the back. We look at it as an accomplishment for the church, a great addition. And man, Ray, we had fun doing it. In the rain. Almost rain. And, and it, was, it was fun watching the nails go through the boards and having to figure out how we're going to cut those off and watching the wood splinter going, well, I didn't see that one coming, and, and, and other challenges that were there. But we had fun in doing it. The Christian camaraderie was great. The coffee is always wonderful. If you want Ray and I to work, we work for coffee. That's all I'm going to say. But, but we can't say that we did it. But how many times do we? I did that. Everything that I have in life, I have worked hard. I have earned it. I, I, I. You got an eye problem that is, is there. When we look at Ephesians, it says we need to be giving thanks for all things. Every good. We want to say we did it, but where did you do it? Where did we do it? Well, here on earth, here in, in, in this building and in, in, in whatever, okay? What would you do it with? Well, I did it, I did it with my abilities that I had. Where would you get that ability at? Well, I was taught that ability. How did you learn it? Well, I got a brain. Where did you get the brain? Where would you get the brain? You stop and think about it. There's an old story that is told that uh, a boy came home from the store and had bought a few groceries for his dad. His dad said, what you got, son? He said, I got a loaf of bread. Where'd you get the bread? I got it at the store. Where'd the store get the bread? Well, from the baker. Where'd the baker get it? Well, 
He made it with flour. Where did he get the flour from? Well, I guess he got it from the farmer. Where did the farmer get get it from? The grain. Where did he get the grain from? Uh, God. Where would you get the bread? From God. You know, we can look and we can look at all the things that we think we can do with our hands, with our accomplishments, with all that we have. And the simple fact is, without God, we got nothing. We got nothing. And, and I know the argument that's going to be said is, you know, there's a lot of people in this world, they're atheists, and they're smart, and, and, and they're rich, and they're not believers, and they live an immoral life, and they do all of this. And, and, and look, they dis, disacknowledge God. What does that mean they're wrong? They only have what they have because God has allowed them to have it when the bottom line is they don't serve God they don't worship God they don't acknowledge God and there will come a day when and realize this everything that they have can be gone like that if you don't believe that go read the book of Job in one day Job went literally from hero to zero he lost all his sheep all his camels all his crops Ultimately, all of his children. And you know what Job's reaction was? The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh me away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Satan said, well, if you take his health from him, then he'll curse you. And even Job's wife said, why don't you curse God and die? But Job refused. He knew He was just and he knew that God was right. It's proper for us to give thanks because God is the one that gives us the blessings that we have and that we can be thankful for. And when you look at the unjust and all that they think they have, it can be gone in a moment. And secondly, we got to get out of the tunnel vision and we need to look at the broad picture. This world is not all that there is. There is so much more after this. So much more. I have, this past week, worked down in the shop. I decided that I would move. Gary, you remember all those rocks we moved from the front of the house? About 14 months ago, you took your tractor and stacked them over there. Well, I got to tell you, I moved a bunch of them again. I decided I wanted to make a fire pit. I should have called you with the tractor to come over because I took my two-wheel dolly and Jill saying, you're going to have a hernia. And I said, that hernia is the last of your worries. You need to worry about the heart attack I'm getting ready to have probably. And she goes, well, that doesn't help. But I moved the rocks and, and, and made a nice fire pit and put a fire in it on Thursday. And, 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 and Ray and I worked down here, and I was up in the attic running a cable, and we were up in the attic and running a water line, and I was down on my knees sanding the cabinet and staining it and up and down. And come, come Friday, I couldn't move. Come Saturday, I really couldn't move. Saturday night, I, I, I took six Tylenol yesterday. That's something I never, not all at once. But I'm telling you, I hurt. And I'm thinking, Lord, I look forward to the day when I will not hurt anymore. I will not hurt anymore. But you know what? I thank God that I could get up a ladder. I thank God that I could get down on my knees. Now, watching me get up wasn't pretty, but I got up. I thank God I could do... All of those things. It is proper for us to give thanks to God. We, we might say, I did that, but in reality, did we? Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 4, 7 says, What do you have that you did not receive? What do you have? You know, there are two classes of people in this world. Those who take things for granted and those who take things with gratitude. Do you know that grace and gratitude come from the same root word? The same Latin word. It's called gratis. How many of you go to a restaurant and you leave a tip? What do we call that? Thank you. Gratuity. Do you know if they give you good service, what do you tend to do? Be a little more generous. If you get lousy service, what do you tend to do? Be stingy? I don't leave them anything. 
And there's two ways that I judge. If it's in the morning, you keep my coffee cup full. If it's in the afternoon or evening, you keep my tea cup full. Tea glass, not cup. Gratis, gratuity. Grace and grateful. They come from the same word. Isn't that awesome? So when we look at we have been given grace by faith, you have been saved through grace, not of yourselves. Grace. Gratitude. God gave us grace. He loved us so much, he gave his son for us. Gratitude. Thank you for giving me that son for salvation. Thank you for. You know, maybe when you go home and you sit down, you need to find a house a household item near you. One that you use on a regular basis. Think about the way that it was made. How it is you came to have it. Can you, you know what my household item is? It's back in the kitchen right now. It's a coffee cup. Out of it, I drink what I call the nectar of life. No, I drink my coffee out of it. I love my coffee. And that cup is special to me because it's a McDonald's cup. And before the virus hit, the McDonald's cup, I could take it in and get a free cup of coffee anywhere I went. Now, they won't do that now because of the pandemic. But, but all I had to do was give them that cup, and they would fill it up for me. That's kind of cool. I get a free cup of coffee. But that cup, somebody gave to me, a really, really good friend in Texarkana gave me that cup. And said, Pastor, I drank co coffee with this group every Thursday. He said, you drink coffee with us, I'm going to give you this cup. Don't break it, don't lose it. And, and that's probably one of the cups I've had the longest. And, it me and, and when I look at that, I want to thank God for the friendship. I want to thank God that someone else bought it. I want to thank God that it brings pleasure in my life. I want to thank God for all of those things. Can you find something that's seemingly Monday, everyday item that you use, and maybe you take it for granted, and you don't thank God for it? <laughs> A year ago, roll of toilet paper was pretty awesome, wasn't it? Pretty awesome. And now we're back. All we complain about is the cost of it. Giving thanks is proper, but I want you to see, secondly, giving thanks is perpetual. Folks, we pass it on. You know what thankfulness promotes? Thankfulness. You know what gratitude promotes? Gratitude. Let me ask you this. If you're around someone with a sour and bad disposition, what's that going to do to you? It's probably going to make me leave. I don't want to be around someone sad and sour, but it, it, it'll pass on to you. Do you know what happens to when you're around someone that's joyful, happy? You tend to be joyful and happy. Ephesians 5, 18, 18 through 20 says, the last part of 18, Be filled with the Spirit... Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all the things God the Father, all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thankfulness is proper, but thankfulness is perpetual. We see with this verse, giving thanks always. We should give thanks always. Always to the Lord. It's good that we have one day a year where we can stop. I mean, literally stop. Well, until 5 o'clock when Black Friday hits, or whatever time it is. I, I, I don't know. I hate that. Used to, the only thing you could find open on, on Thanksgiving was a convenient store, and now the grocery stores are open, and all these other stores are open, and, and, and we're losing Thanksgiving. But it, it was good that we had that one day we could call Thanksgiving, and, and it should be upsetting to us that we now, we don't even call it Thanksgiving, we call it Turkey Day. When in fact, turkey wasn't even at the first Thanksgiving dinner, it was probably venison. 
And our, and, and our national bird, the eagle, was funny because it was almost a turkey. Wouldn't that have been a hoot? But why? Our culture is trying to secularize, so secularize the idea of giving thanks to God. But George Washington, in the first Thanksgiving proclamation, said this. You know, our forefathers were so masterful with the English language and so smart. Listen to what he said. It is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and to humbly implore His protection and favor. We don't talk like that today. I know exactly what he said. But you know, as I read over it more than once, every, every American has an obligation to acknowledge the providence, the care, the direction, the keeping of us. Thank God Almighty for this thanksgiving that we have. For His providence to God Almighty to obey... We don't have to have that interpreted, to obey His will, be grateful for His benefits, but to humbly implore, His, beg for His protection over us that's made us this great nation. But we're not supposed to do it just one day a year, and it's a shame if that's all we do is one day a year. It's not enough for what God does us. Does He just bless you one day a year? If we only give thanks that one day, we're apt to forget what those blessings truly are. His blessings come daily. I can get out of bed. I have clothes to wear. I have a coffee pot that I can push the button. I can go out and turn the thermostat up and get heat. I've got hot water to take a shower. I've got clean clothes. i got a recliner to sit in drink. I have got several different Bibles that I can read. I can read. I can listen to God talk to me. I can watch the beautiful sunrise every morning. Folks, that happens just in the first hour that I'm awake. There's 23 more hours that are there. God's blessings are not just one time a year. The psalmist says in verse, or chapter 68, verse 19, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, you'll know right away. Through the, through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Wow! Every morning they're new. Every day God has brand new blessings for us. We are to give God thanks always. Every prayer that we have should be salted with thanks. The Apostle Paul gave the recipe for not worrying. Be anxious for nothing but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Don't ever pray without giving thanks to God. When we look at the five aspects of first one, thanksgiving, praise, adoration, supplication, we look at those five things that are there. And we need to be thankful to God. Not just once, a year, not just one day, but I think all through the day. It's perpetual. We need to make sure that we thank God every day. When you pray, do it with thanksgiving. You know, maybe we need to pull some of the groans out of our thanksgiving and shove in a little more thanks. Thank God in everything. Does that mean i got to thank Him when I'm sick? Does that mean I have to thank Him when times are, are, are hard and, 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 and tough? And Well, 
I'm going to let you come back tonight and I'll answer that question for you. But I want to leave you as we, as we pray perpetually. We need to see the life of perpetual thanksgiving doesn't happen on its own. We have to be intentional about our good intentions. Yesterday, I was down working at the church. We're working through some of the technical ends with the new computer, the video. And more than twice, it's caused me to almost pull my hair out, get so, so frustrated. Nothing will make you madder than technology, right, Les? It, it, it will make you, it will, it's almost like stubbing your toe. You want to speak in a different language. But you know, I had to stop yesterday and I had to smile for a minute. What a blessing that God's provided us with the technology. God provided me with a son who on the telephone, you think I was getting frustrated? He's on the phone. We're trying to do a video chat, and every three minutes it drops because we don't have strong enough signal. And then when he does call me back, I'm trying to tell him over the phone. And you know how much fun it is to tell someone something over the phone? But I'm thanking God that he walked me through it step by step. And then in the background, Jill's over here taking notes, and I didn't even know it. And Jill, I used those notes this morning. You have to be intentional. You know, any of you guys ever have, I don't know, road rage? Somebody pulls out in front of you, sits at a green light, doesn't signal when they turn, pulls out in front of you, and you just want to go, thank you, Jesus. But we don't, do we? Why don't we? Thank you, Jesus, that I was able to stop, that I was all able to make the adjustment. And Lord, be with this man, this woman, that they'll be more conscientious of their driving or they're going to kill themselves. Hmm, haven't thought of that one, have we? We need to be intentional. Burnt the pot roast. Thank you, Lord. We have burnt offerings and now we can go out to eat. Want to do that anyway. Thank you, Lord. The preacher's wrapping up his sermon. He said enough. It's getting time to go home, and, and we, need to, we need to wrap this up, God, so, so, we can, so we can go home. You have to be intentional about your prayer. And you know what? You need to pray for your preacher every day anyway, because let me tell you, if anybody needs a prayer, it's Jill. Because <laughs> she lives with me, and I'm such a fun in, in no. Folks, we just need to be, it's proper. To God, everything belongs to, and it needs to be perpetual. You know, Jared, I was just thinking I hit Leo in the head with the candy corn, and I couldn't aim and hit it, but you know what's awesome about that? Last week he fell off the stage, didn't he? I was just thinking if I hit him and he fell off that stage, I probably just would have left out that door and we'd have been done. You see, we can have fun in our praise, we can have or our, our, our thanks, and we need to. And we need to smile. We need to be the happy Christians. God has given us so much that we need to be thankful for, and we miss it. Maybe it's time to commit to God and say, in my thanksgiving, it will be its proper, and I will give you thanks, and I will give you thanks continually. What number are we singing, Jared? Page 312, let's all stand. Father, I thank you for today, and I, I thank you that we can say thank you. So many times we get so wrapped up in everything around the world, we don't, we don't pay attention. We get lost in it. We get so consumed with everything else. And Lord, sometimes we consume ourselves with ourselves, thinking everything that we have is because of us. Let us not. Let us see everything that we have is only from you. And Lord, maybe the things we have we don't want. You can show us how even that we can be thankful for. Lord, uh, let us respond to your invitation. And that commitment to come into this Thanksgiving season with a heart that can be thankful. Because it's proper and we can be perpetual. Let your will be done in this invitation. In your name we pray. Amen.